Should drug users have the right to keep and bear arms? Let me ask you though, have you ever used an illegal drug? Let me be clearer. Have you ever used a controlled substance in an unlawful manner? Taken a prescription pill other than exactly as prescribed? Used marijuana in a state that has legalized recreational use? If you did, then your Second Amendment rights were suspended and it was thereafter illegal for you to be in the possession of a firearm. However, that could be changing soon because that's exactly what the US Supreme Court is currently deciding. Patrick Darnell Daniels Jr. was pulled over by police. The police found two firearms and some marijuana in his vehicle, so he was arrested. You might be wondering how much marijuana this kingpin had in his possession. He had less than half a gram. As a frame of reference, one raisin weighs approximately half a gram. I want you to keep that in mind. Unfortunately, during questioning, he then admitted to using marijuana about 14 days out of the month. There was no evidence that he was under the influence at the time of the arrest and no evidence as to when the last time he had used. However, he did say that he hadn't used for some period of time because he was broke. He was convicted after a jury trial and then sentenced to nearly four years in prison and then three years of supervised release. He was also permanently banned from ever owning a firearm again for the rest of his life. He then immediately appealed the conviction to the Fifth Circuit Court of Appeals. The Fifth Circuit actually granted the appeal and overturned the conviction. If you recall, the Fifth Circuit Court of Appeals is the same court who recently determined that it is unconstitutional to prohibit domestic abusers from possessing firearms. Why is this such a big deal? Well, this wasn't some ultra-liberal West Coast or New York Court of Appeals. The Fifth Circuit Court of Appeals is one of the most conservative appellate courts in the country, which establishes controlling case law for Texas, Louisiana, and Mississippi. After a 2022 Second Amendment rights victory in the U.S. Supreme Court, we were provided a new and very strict framework in which gun control laws must be analyzed. Using this framework, the Fifth Circuit considered the historical tradition of firearm regulation and found that this drug user gun control law was a violation of Daniel's constitutional rights. At the heart of this debate is the question of whether prior drug use should automatically disqualify an individual from gun ownership. This issue is particularly controversial, considering changing societal attitudes towards drug use and rehabilitation. People who support gun rights say that if someone used drugs but wasn't violent, they shouldn't lose their right to own a gun forever, especially for minor data defenses. But those who are against this argue that we need to keep strict rules for owning guns to make sure everyone stays safe. This case represents a crucial test in defining the boundaries of the Second Amendment, especially for individuals who use drugs and firearms, though not at the same time. The government's argument emphasizes public safety concerns regarding allowing gun rights to individuals who use drugs. This argument is rooted in the belief that drug use can impair judgment and increase the risk of violent behavior, thus posing a threat to public safety if such individuals are allowed to possess firearms. The government maintains that the restriction is a necessary measure to protect citizens and aligns with responsible gun control policies. This perspective upholds federal laws as a critical tool in preventing potentially dangerous individuals from accessing firearms, arguing that such measures are in the best interest of the community's safety and well-being. The government tries to overcome the history and tradition test, since drug use apparently wasn't an issue at the time of the founding of the country, by arguing that drug users should be disarmed because there is a history of disarming people who are intoxicated. The government even argues that this law is necessary to protect drug users from themselves. They cite two statistics and studies showing that 61% of gun deaths in the U.S. are a result of suicide and that marijuana users pose a higher risk of suicide than ordinary citizens. The government's argument reflects a cautious approach to gun rights, prioritizing public safety over the restoration of firearm privileges to drug users. The defendant's argument contends that such restrictions unjustly infringe upon the Second Amendment rights of nonviolent drug users. He correctly points out that these intoxication laws, which have historically been used to disarm citizens, only limited disarmament to the time while the person was under the influence. However, this current law would permanently disarm drug users even while they are not under the influence of their drug of choice. If you'll recall, there was no evidence that the defendant was impaired at the time of the offense. The defendant argues that the law itself is unconstitutionally vague since there is no clear definition of what a user is. Merriam-Webster's dictionary is of little help since it defines a user as one that uses, and Black's Law Dictionary defines a user as someone who uses a thing. Further, the law doesn't define how recently someone must have used in order to be a user under the law. Perhaps if you have ever used marijuana 
or taken a prescription drug in a manner other than directed, then you could be prosecuted for this crime. As of today, we're waiting to see if the Supreme Court will take up the case or hold it until it decides the Rahimi case. Regardless of the outcome, the Supreme Court's decision in this case will have far-reaching implications, shaping future gun ownership laws and Second Amendment interpretations. A ruling in favor of the defendant would undoubtedly expand the Second Amendment and allow certain nonviolent drug offenders to regain gun rights. This would mark a significant shift in gun policy, reflecting evolving views on drug offenses and rehabilitation. Conversely, a decision upholding current restrictions would reinforce the government's stance on public safety and responsible gun ownership, and likely embolden additional prosecutions.